In this video, we're going to continue our investigation into modeling, and we're going to be talking about residuals. So we're going to be running more regressions and talking about, you know, how accurate these, you know, models are. So we're going to start by just finding an exponential model for the data in the table below. And this should be familiar, we did this quite a bit last time. Hey, when we see that exponential model, we're thinking, okay, we're going for something like a times b to the x. Um, but what we're going to need to do in order to get that model is we're going to need to use technology, we're going to need to enter the data into the lists, and then we're going to need to run a regression in kind of two separate steps. So first, we're going to go get into the lists. So we're going to go over here to stat, and then we're going to choose edit so that we can edit the lists, and then we're going to enter all of our data. I don't think you need to watch me type all that in there. Okay, and then once we're done with that, we can go back to the stat menu and calculate our regression equation. So we're going for an exponential request, yeah, an exponential regression, so we're going to go down to the bottom, that's choice zero, and then we're going to say, okay, yeah, the X list was list one, and the Y list was list two, there was not a frequency list, I am going to want to store my regression equation into Y1, and then I'm going to have it calculate. And then it'll tell me, okay, so it's a times b to the x, where a is equal to this number and b is equal to that number. And since I chose store it in y1, it already, like, has done that for me. So if I wanted to graph it or look at the data on a stat plot or something like that, I, I could do that. So I'm just going to report my regression equation. I'm going to say y hat equals 13.843 times 0.875 to the x. Uh, I'm going to use that y hat notation because we're really going to be talking about the comparison between the predictive value and the actual value today, and so I don't want that to be like something we get confused about. So if we're going to use the model to predict the value of f of 6, we're going to plug x equals 6 into the equation for y hat. So we're going to go out to the main menu, and we're going to go call for y1. And we could either do that the same way I did before, or we could go to variables, scroll over to y variables, we're in function mode, and grab y1. And then we're going to want to plug in 6, and the advantage of that is if I go to y equals and click on that, see, I've got a bunch of decimals, and I've got the most accurate possible estimation. And so I'm going to say y1 of 6, and that's going to be 6.213. And then after that, it's going to tell me the true value of f of 6 is 6.5. And did the model just overestimate or underestimate the true value of f of 6? Well, we know that f of 6 is actually 6.5, and we predicted it to be 6.213 from the model, so that would be an underestimate. And to kind of put that more formally and get closer to what we're going to be talking about here in a second with the, with the residuals, uh, it's because y hat, the predicted value, was less than f of 6. And so that y hat, just to emphasize once again, that was the predicted value from the model, whereas f of 6 was the true value of the function. All right, so now I think we're ready to define residual. So for a given model y hat of x that predicts values of the function f, the residual for the prediction at x equals x0 is given by f of x0 minus y hat of x0. And that's, you know, like a little wordy. Uh, we're going to need a way to remember this. What we're going to say is residual is equal to actual minus predicted. And that's going to be something that we need to just remember. But I think it's going to be pretty all right for us to remember that because this is AP precal, so it's AP precal, actual minus predicted. And it's not just because it's AP precal, that's like we found that that was how it is on all sorts of statistics textbooks. Um, and that's just gonna be our definition of residual. So let's go back to our prediction that we made just a second ago. Uh, predicted value of f of six was, uh, it was less than 6.5, right? So our residual was equal to f of six minus y hat of six. Okay, now we know f of 6 was 6.5, and we found that y hat was 6.213, and if we think about 6.5 minus 6.213, the actual value of it is not as important as the fact that it is a positive number. And if you think about it, any time a model underestimates the true value of a function, that's what we're going to see. 
uh, we're going to see actual minus predicted being a positive number. So we can say a model underestimates the function if the residual corresponding to that estimation is positive and an overestimate will happen with a negative residual, which is kind of the opposite of what I would have expected. But um, actual minus predicted, that's the definition, so that's what we go with. So the next example I got for you is about the weight of newborn babies. So the weight of newborn babies can be modeled by a linear function for the first few months after birth. And selected values of the weight of a baby in pounds are given in the table below, where t represents the number of months after birth. So we're going to start by getting a regression equation for the data and use that using that model to predict the weight of the baby at time five months. So I'll start by putting the data in the table. Okay, so stat, edit, put that data in. And then we're going to go and back to the stat menu and ask for a linear regression. So, wait, no, 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 not one variable stats. That is not what we want. We want to go down to linear regression, AX plus B. That's option four. Okay, list one, list two. We're going to want to use this equation to make a prediction. So we should probably store that in Y1. And then we can calculate. All right, I don't have the diagnostics on, so I can't see the value of R squared to see you know, how good of a prediction is. But I don't really need that for AP Precal, so maybe it's best that I don't have that on right now. Um, if you're interested, that's always you know useful information to have. Uh, but I'm just going to say, all right, uh, W hat of T is going to be 0 0.86 times T plus 3.32. And so we're going to use the model to predict the weight of the baby. Okay, so we can do that. We're going to plug in 5 into that function. Um, you know, one thing I would like to see them ask you, but I don't think they're going to, uh, is like to interpret the meaning of the slope and the y-intercept of this uh, regression equation. Like, that would be a really nice question to ask. Okay, yeah, that would be 7.62. Okay, 7.62 pounds. Yeah, at time t equals 5 months. Okay. Um, oh, no, it doesn't actually say how many pounds the baby weighs at t equals 5 months. What a shame. Let's try to fix that. Okay. Um, I've decided that the um, newborn baby is 7.2 pounds at 5 months. Um, now I'm kind of realizing, I think I, I think this was a, originally a kilograms problem that I switched to pounds and forgot to make it a more realistic weight. Um, it was like, oh, only 7.2 pounds at five months. Like, oh, this, is, this is a small baby. Um, but we're going to look at the residual for the prediction from part A. So that's going to be actual minus predicted. I'm just going to write that out. I think it's good we can see that. And that's going to be, all right, actual was 7.2 minus 7.62, and that's going to be, you know, the residual. And we've got a calculator at our disposal, so I'm going to say 7.2. That's, didn't think, so it wasn't listening when I typed that in. Uh, minus 7.62, you know, get ourselves a residual of negative 0.42 pounds. All right, the next thing is I'm going to ask us to sketch a residual plot. Now, I will say this is not something you must be able to do for AP Precal. We need to only be able to reason with residual plots. But I think in order to reason with them, we need to make them a couple of times. Now, I had forgotten how to make these myself. It's been eight school years since I taught AP Stats and I only taught it the one time. So I kind of forgot how this works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into list three and we're gonna get the predicted values. Okay. Or yeah, the predicted values and that's gonna be from the regression equation. We're gonna do that by going over here to list three and saying it's equal to y1 of list one. And so evidently it just runs that whole list through the regression model and then we're going to get that. And that kind of makes sense if we go back and look at the data in the table. This is like really close to what we were seeing in the table. Okay, but L3 is our prediction because we used Y1. Okay, that means that we can go over to list 4 and go up here and define list 4. Well, that's going to be actual minus predicted. So list 2 minus 
list three. Okay. And this is something we'll need to do on the homework a couple of times. Okay, but you know, not something you would ever have to do on like the test um, or the AP exam particularly. So when we're sketching a residual plot, so a residual plot is going to probably look about like this. And this is always something you're going to be given and asked uh, to answer really one specific question about. Um, but we're going to make the one here. And so I've got, you know, x equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what we're going to be doing is plotting on the vertical axis the residual. So, uh, and that'll be the numbers in list 4. So the biggest number I see is 0 0.1, and the most negative number I see is negative 0 0.06. So I think I could probably like label my vertical axes 0 0.1 and negative 0 0.1, and that'd be good. And then just to emphasize once again that the vertical axis is the residual versus x. Okay, so for each predicted spot. So uh, the first one is x equals 0, residual negative 0 0.02, so a fifth of the way down. Then x equals 1, positive 0.02. Okay, that might have been a little aggressive. It's down here, but I probably shouldn't obsess about that. At x equals 2, I've got negative 0.4, so it'd be just a little under halfway, maybe about there. Um, then I've got positive 0.1 at x equals 3, and then negative 0 0.06, so it'd be like about two-thirds of the way. I don't know, about like there. And so we're seeing this just like kind of like some are positive, some are negative, they're, it's like, I don't know, it seems like they might be getting bigger, but uh, we're not seeing any sort of like really clear linear pattern or quadratic pattern or exponential pattern or anything. Um, so, okay, and, and that's going to be something we're interested in here in a moment. All right, this next thing here, this is really what you need to be able to do with a residual plot in AP Pre-Cal, is answer the question is it appropriate or is it not appropriate so a model is justified as appropriate for a data set if the graph of the residuals of a regression the residual plot appears without pattern now it's pretty easy to read patterns in to things that aren't there that's a classic human fallacy really here this one that you can see right here this is a clear pattern, right? It is a quadratic looking type thing. It's going up and then down. It looks like points on a parabola. So what we're going to see uh, is like, okay, that is a pattern and it needs to be pretty clear. So if we're seeing a clear pattern, the, re the regression is going to be inappropriate for the data set. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm looking for not appropriate. All right, is appropriate, you are out. Um, both of those. So because there's a clear pattern in the graph of the residuals, there it is. Okay, and if we can just know that and remember that, that's kind of a trivia fact. That's a right answer. That's something I'm sure they're going to ask you on the AP Precal exam this year. Okay, whether it's this year, the first year they're offering the course, or some year in the future. Um, it's one of the essential knowledges. It's about the residual plot, and there's really kind of only the one thing they can ask about it: is appropriate or is it not appropriate? So the Problem could probably look a lot like this. Um, and I've got another one, so let's just keep moving. All right, here's another one with pretty much the same idea. Here's a residual plot, uh, which of the following is the best conclusion about the appropriateness of the exponential model, because this is the residual plot for that exponential model. Um, it's just kind of scattered around the x-axis. I got some positive, I got some negative, not seeing any clear pattern. So it is going to be appropriate. Okay, is appropriate because the residuals show no pattern. Okay, that's answer choice C in this case. Okay, and then I've got another one. I'll uncover that one, and it's going to be a student took a given data set and ran three regressions for potential equations of best fit. And we're actually going to do that uh, down here on the next page. Um, with a given data set, we're going to run two different ones, look at the residual plot, see that we see a pattern in one, no pattern in the other, conclude that one's better. Hey, I think that's what you could do, like, you know, in the big picture, but I don't think that's what you're going to be asked to do in free response for this class because it's prescribed. Okay, but we've already talked about that. Okay, which of the models was most appropriate? Well, the appropriate, that's the one with the least pattern. And so I'm going to say that is this one that is not showing a clear pattern um, because I'm seeing that down, up. I'm seeing that down, up, down on the second one. Okay, and uh, really a reason for my answer based on the residual plot, I'm seeing no pattern on this one. No pattern in that residual plot, and that's why I think that that's the most appropriate. And we don't have to write a dissertation on it. I think that'll be sufficient. Um,
All right, now the next problem here, we're going to run a linear regression and an exponential regression on the same data set and make a residual plot for each regression. And then we're going to, you know, draw a conclusion based on what we're seeing. All right, so I've got list one and list two entered. You know, you know how to do that already. I'm going to run a linear regression first. So I'm going to calculate a linear regression, which is option four. List one, list two, I'm going to store the regression equation into y1, and then I'm going to calculate. Okay, and I'm going to get y equals ax plus b, a equals 4, b equals negative 1.45. So I'm going to say the equation would be y hat equals ax for x plus b is 1.5. Okay, and then we're going to get our residual table. So we're gonna go back to the tables, define list three to equal y1 of list one. Okay, and then I get all of those, and now I'm going to get these residuals here. That's gonna be list two minus list three, actual minus predicted, right? We predicted the spots over there, and we're gonna see, all right, Residual x equals 1. We're just going to copy down what we see in the table. So I copied that in, and I'm going to plot my residuals now. Now I'm looking, and I'm seeing 1.45 and negative 1.55, and the vertical axis only has really one full square. I don't like that. So I'm going to change the scale on the vertical axis. Right? I'm going to make that negative 2 to 2. And so 1.45, that's almost 1 and a half. That would be 3 quarters of the way to 2. Okay, let's go about there. This doesn't have to be exact, right? We just want a good picture, and but part of that is going to be having a reasonable scale. So negative 1.55 would be, again, about three quarters of the way between zero and negative two. And then, wait, oh, no, no, negative 0 0.55. That's going to be about a quarter of the way. Negative 1.55, that's going to be three quarters. Okay, negative 1.05, that'd be about halfway uh, between zero. Yeah, because it's like negative 1. And then positive 1.7, almost all the way to 2. Okay, and now I'm seeing a pretty clear pattern on that. That looks kind of quadratic. It's at least curved, and it's going down, then up. So let's run the exponential regression and see what we get. So if we do the exponential regression, I'm wondering if list 3 and list 4 will just update. Um, but I guess that'll be pretty easy to see. So I'm going to go over here, stat calculate. Uh, I want to run a regression regression that's exponential, that's option zero. Okay, I'm going to want to store this into y1. And then I can calculate and all right, I'm going to copy that down. Okay, y hat is a times b to the x. So that's 2.667. Well, that'd be, okay, it looks like two and two thirds. So that's six, eight thirds times 1.5 to the x, that's 3 halves to the x. Okay, now let's go check back in with our lists and see if they updated. No, they did not. Okay, is it remembering? No, okay, yeah, it just all it knows is what, I, what it got after it did that. But that's all right. I'll have it run y1 of list 1. And then over here, oh, look, I don't even need to do the residuals because I can see it's exactly the same. So the residual is zero on all of these. And now that's the one thing I'm t not totally sure about with this residual plot business for AP Precal is if your data is perfectly exponential, which I think that's maybe that's kind of the point is that your data is not ever really perfect. But if the data is perfect, then res your residuals will all be zero. And that looks like a clear pattern to me as well. But based on the residual plots and the fact that I'm getting no residual at all, that means this is a perfect model. And so the data set must be exponential. Okay. And that's all I've got. Um, really, residuals, not that big of a deal for AP Precal. But, and I think anything they could possibly ask you about, I just told you about in this video. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.